Hello. Good day, everybody. I know I'm a little bit late. My apologies. Um, just some behind the scenes hiccups. Anyways, suffice to say, we're here. You know about as much about what's going on on the vanilla server right now as I do, because I have not touched it since we last logged off about nearly two months ago. So um, I have to figure out which end is up. And um, we're going to go scope out a space in. Um, we're going to go scope out a space in the um, shopping district after taking the time to say good morning to everybody. So I'm going to do a bit of scroll back Hello there. and catch Hello everybody there. up. I would not be surprised. Zerk, welcome in. Well, thank you for being the, the first person in today. Unofficial first here. That goes to Poodle. Poodle Pirate claimed that. And I don't even know if it's counting correctly. Give me a second to find out. Okay, so Zerk came in. Welcome back. Mastic Shock Fox. Hello to you as well. I think the thing is counting correctly, Poodle, but I don't really know. So we'll have to cross our fingers and see. Let's see how we're doing here. Power's out and your service isn't great at home. We'll see how it goes. If you need to deke out to try and save battery for emergencies, go right ahead. I'm totally supporting that because I've heard that you were having some rather interesting weather in your neck of the woods. Let's see what else we've got. Making sure I haven't missed anything else. Good morning, Mama Bear. And good morning twice over because it looked like Mama Bear was on the server at the same time. Dogs and cats living together. Mass hysteria. Yes, that's a movie quote. Can't place it at the moment, but that's definitely there. I think that's from Groundhog Day, actually. Oh, right. Ghostbusters? Yes. Thank you. Bill Murray movie. We're halfway there. It's like a geek out that failed. Speaking of which, why not? We're in the process of getting some more geek outs put in. Um, I, of the quote unquote original category, I have gotten just over half. Let's see, I probably can't see it all that well from where you guys are. Let's match them together. We've got, yeah, just over half of the stack um, put in. And then I'm 
almost halfway through the Disney ones, so you'll see more of those coming up. But we're getting some more of those geek outs coming in. Apparently they're quite popular. And also looking for some other things to do. Fantastic Truck Box and I were discussing potential ways to um, tweak the, the Cards Against Humanity thing because I do it a little differently than some others do, aside from it being family friendly. Um, and there's some really interesting things that I actually would let slide on the stream uh, because they're not technically family unfriendly, but they were just sort of tasteless. <laughs> so yeah, um, it didn't happen here. It, just, it happened in another stream that Fantastic Shock Fox watches. I'm just gonna grab a bit of coffee. Alrighty, so let's get, wow. I was going to say, let's get down to business, and then my brain immediately went um, to to Mulan, <laughs> of all the things. And it, I got on stream, and I'm going, why the heck do I have particles? What did I drink? Because I was sitting here with a bunch of bottles in my inventory. And it's not. It's there's um, You can see the beacon out yonder, because I was using the haste for chopping down trees. So we made come back and do a bunch of chopping after that. Milan! Yes, Milan was the answer to everything. Let's see, what counts as Star Trek governments? I mean, yeah, those are two of them for sure, because that was actually the Bajoran Federation, oddly. <laughs> it's be And it's supposed to be the Bajoran government, but of course they were counting um, the semi-local governments on the uh, Bajoran-controlled space station afterwards. Weirdly. Okay, anyway, um, what else have we got here? Ooh! I have an excuse to go to the this to the shopping district. Yay! That's really what it is, an excuse. I don't know why I have glass bottles. I was there was some reason I wanted them. I can't remember what it was. Probably for the bees, but I don't think I have bees. I don't know. I really don't know. So I'm gonna try and leave them behind. See if I can remember that I did so. I'm sure I'll figure out why later on. All right, let's just make sure nothing else is super broken around here. Because one of the other things that does happen is time marches on on the server, and so things get full. And I just need to make sure we don't have too many problems with things being full. Okay. Good, my base was not loaded, so that helps. That helps. I'm sure we probably have a ton of iron. At least I hope we do. What's this. Okay, good. My base was generally not loaded for the last two and a half months, so nothing has happened, which is kind of nice to know, I guess. Maybe. Feels weird. So time didn't quite march on. What do we got? Nope. Nothing exciting. Okay, we're good. We're good. Hmm. I am crickety crackety crunching all over. I just, like, I even rotate my shoulder a little bit, and I've got about seven cracks out of it by doing that, and it's still doing it. So something's not quite right. Oh well, that's okay. Guess I had a rough sleep. Didn't know about it. Quality, you haven't seen the plans Hello. for today Hello. yet. <laughs> As per the, um, what do you call it? As per the, um, panel on my channel. This is one of those, you know, flying in by the seat of your pants, usually late dealios, and have no idea what I'm doing. Yep, time has marched on because I don't remember some of these funky fe features. Although I could have actually just become, you know, awfully forgetful. That's highly plausible. But welcome in, DC. One could say that DC is partially responsible for me being back here. Not just uh, his gentle ribbing, but also that um, the only thing really left for me to do in modded, in my point of view, would be to start down different squirrel paths that I hadn't touched at this point, and um, more of a just because kind of thing. And I figured, yeah, that's probably not the world's best idea in under, well, roughly under a week, I guess. That's okay, we're gonna just move, transition it from one type of crying around to another type of crying around. You know? It's just... Oh. Okay, give me a sec. First things first. 
as much as I would absolutely love to uh, just go putzing around in the dark, we don't have sleeping bags here. Therefore, unfortunately, I think I need to actually um, sleep so that I don't end up dragging creepers in and blowing up half the shopping district. Because that's the other thing, is I actually have to worry about creepers here. No cutesy cat slippers. I missed them already, to be honest with you. That's interesting. See, things happen when you're not around. Or when I'm not around on the server. Which is good to know. But then I get very, very confused. Oh, axolotls. Got it. Neato. That's cool. Uh, new to me, anyways. I don't know if, if Fantastic Shot Fox has seen it. But, yeah, there's axolotls in there. And some... I think that's fake? I'm not really sure. I'm assuming it's fake. There's a dude in the bottom. It looks... yeah. It looks like an armor stand with a glow squid head? Whatever. That's cool enough. Which I just, might as well just take the long way down. Policy... oh. You know, honestly, I never looked to see what it was like under the post office. Huh, okay. Yeah. DC streams, I've really been enjoying DC streams, but unfortunately they're high content, which just means that it doesn't stick in my head. As expected, no mail. As expected, Fox, check your mail. <laughs> All right. One of these days I'll figure out how to do doors like that. I want to try, um, at some point, try the puffer fish method. But I'm, I'd actually have to deal with you know, carting puffer fish around, and that's not high on my list. Okay, not much has changed so far. But that's good news. Note to self, send to lend mail. No, that's fine. I don't care. Oops, what's this? 26. Okay, so I can up that a little bit. Let's start by breaking these up. Twenty. One, two, three, four, five. And I know that last one didn't end up working right. 26. It's not that I needed 26 for a particular reason, other than there's already 26 in these slots. 24, 5, 6. There we go. That one. When I say as stacked, I kind of meant it, so we're good. Let's see. I'm going to pull some. Actually, you know what? That doesn't bother me nearly as much, that particular slot being empty. We actually have room for putting more chicken. Yay! Okay, feathers. Nobody needs these. So I have expectations they didn't move at all. I'm okay with that. Nobody needs feathers. Okay. So, thus far, not a whole ton has changed, which is good news. Um... It's not necessarily a FOMO, it's more... Ooh, there's something down there. I don't know what it is. I'll have to go explore. I can't remember. I know what this is. I know what that is. Which I always thought this was a really good usage of a funky hole in the ground. <laughs> Thank you so much, Mama Bear. For the... Um, Points-based support. I like that. By the way, oh, it's Schaefer! Aha! You know, honestly, I've never been into Schaefer. Damon chest, ATM smart. <laughs> Mangrove, cherry, spruce, jungle, leaves. Okay. Neato. So it has been suggested that I take um, the leavings, I guess one could say, of my villagers and just turn it into a some sort of gear shop. While I like the idea, um, and I have an idea for what it could look like, I'm not particularly sure about the pricing. That's the challenge. So I have to so it's one of those things where I can build a shop, I can put stuff in it. 
but I have to figure out how to put price tags on it. And that's never been something I'm good at. I mean, it, people often say, you know, just, just make it a diamond a thing if it's a stack of something. Well, that's not going to work in a gear shop, right? That'd be the world's cheapest gear. And you, for one, you couldn't keep it stocked. Oh, right. Let's see what, what ridiculousness this guy has for me today. Huh? Oh wow, it keeps going right about that's fourteen notes, I think it is. It's tall. There we go. Today's commentary is... Let's see. If it excites you and scares you at the same time, it probably means you should do it. Yeah, that, that really works. I need to make a recycle bin for these. I always forget. Yeah, I really should make a recycle bin for that. Just sort of a please deposit here thing. Actually, let's just do so. Let's see. What do I have in the ender chest that I can just drop and leave? A chest chest. That'll work. That'll work. I need a sign as well. If it excites you and scares you, do it. Yeah. And that that's also very um, standard advice for Minecraft. Do I have... should be this box. I thought I had signs already. I mean, I may not, but, you know. Memory not great and all that. Okay, so this is the toolbox of what I should be using, not the emergency stuff. Silly me. Uh, that's what I want to move. I want this one back. It does not look like I stole everything from the emergency box, but I really shouldn't be using that one. Let's put that in the middle. Okay, did I get a sign? I got a sign. Good. Oops. Optional recycling. Drop off. There we go. I don't know what's going on in here. Okay. So for the plan, maybe? Whatever. Um, for the idea of a shop, we will need lots and lots and lots of space. Come on. Because when have I ever built anything but big? Oh. We're good. So, time to take a peek and find a spot that actually looks a little bit more effective than Tradar's. And I guess I could build next door to him, that would make some sense. We've already got a black building down here, that might be a little much. He sees is down there. Yeah, that shop might not be too bad. What I'm thinking about building, um, as a... Ooh, hang on a sec here. Wait a sec. Okay, so this is that type of shop. Trims and archaeology stuff and whatnot. Okay. Not too harmful. Though the vine in the front's mildly funny that it just sort of took over the place. Um, I may have to steal his tree, but we'll see. Looks like they're added for his stuff, so I'll try and leave them. 
but I'm thinking of doing um, just a generic like gear and armor shop, probably mostly diamond, once I get everything loaded. Um, I don't know if I'll bother enchanting it further beyond what the, the villagers already have. It may depend how my librarians turn out, because I haven't taken a look at them in a while and I'm pretty sure I didn't have everything I wanted from them. Um, but then I'm thinking about doing it in the shape of a large anvil. Because, you know, that's a fairly straightforward shape we can use, right? Oh, it... Hello there. Yeah, it's, it'd be a little cracked. I might even call it something like the cracked anvil. Who knows? Let's see. Anvil. <laughs> right. Never mind. Anvils are very square shapes. What I think I might do, rather than, than purely um, copying a Minecraft anvil, I think I might actually take a look for a photograph of um, a real-life blacksmith anvil. Just to keep the prices... Yeah, keep the prices cheap. Exactly. And then... Um, or I could even call it trouble saver, you know? Just to keep people from... Like, save them the trouble of having to go to actually talk to a villager or actually mine the diamonds for their own gear. There's there's plenty of opportunity there, but uh, keep the prices cheap for Fox. It would be it'd be extra cheap, but that's just because ninety percent of my diamonds came from Fox in the first place. Get your initial gear from donation at the spawn house, but for newer players in the server, a gear up stop would be would help. Yep, and I happen to know that Fox, um, Fantastic Shock Fox, also got a donation from some oddball anonymous person who managed to find their hole in the ground at the time. Because Fantastic Shock Fox is not great at checking their mail. Okay. How did I... That's weird. I don't remember um, clicking any sort of sort button, but my inventory got all changed up. And that's fine. Just confused me for a second. Okay, so anyways. So the anvil basically would look somewhat like the square ones you see in Minecraft. But with possibly more of a horn shape on the end of it. Because squares fine and all, but let's do that. You did most of the digging for that. And I mean, hey, I could cop to where that armor came from because I know, but I'm not going to tell. For Geeko, what have we got? Disney categories, live action, two titles in which a cat is a main character. In live action? Huh. I don't think they ever did a live-action Aristocats. That would be an animated for sure. Maybe they're talking about um, one of the live-action Jungle Book versions and possibly at a stretch, The Lion King. So yeah, that's my guess. However, um, mods and uh, mods and me can Hello. easily. Uh, What's the word? Skip the, the five minute minimum on the geek out timer. It's just anybody else is not able to. Ah, you woke up. <laughs> you woke up the terrier. Hey, terrier darts. Good to see you. Hello. Dang cats. Yeah. Let's go this one. Now we're, we're once again back in the animated realm. It's still Disney. Uh, one fictional named shop or restaurant in Pixar material. Thank you for catching that fantastic Sherlock Fox. Yeah, good afternoon, good evening to those of you across the pond. <laughs> Wrong way for the wood shop. Turn around. Gee, I wonder who that's aimed at. It's not me, but I, I've got a few theories. Though it is mildly amusing, you, you do a, a complete 180 from this sign. I start pointing at Pluto's Blunders, which is definitely not the wood shop. Okay. So location, location, location for something big. That's the thing. Big. I'm kind of wondering. Oops. Um. What was that? Weird. I just had some oddball stuff pop up in the corner. Okay. So this, this uh, square in the center, more or less, 
I can't do anything with that because that is the no-go actual spawn zone. You can't put anything down and so on. It's it's very wisely protected. Which just goes to show how ridiculously big Tradar was. Oops. Sorry. Um, and how ridiculously not flat this area is. So I'm thinking possibly next door to Tradar taking out some of the spruce in here. Flatten stuff out. That's probably because I'm not so keen on building on top of the snow. You guys are well aware of that. But it's tempting? I don't know. Like it's either back in next to Tradar or possibly in behind the woodshed thing. I also have to figure out the scale because um, I'd like it to be a little smaller than Tradar. My projects don't need to be that big because yeah, one shop that's the size of the post office would be kind of insulting, I think, to the makers of many of these other fine shops. The other thing we need is we need it done in black. You wondered what what was for, Mama Bear. I missed that. I apologize. Those signs saved you so much time. Well, it was actually funny because I thought, you know, I really can't figure out what I'm what I want to do, and I'm in a pinch. I'll uh, chop up some wood. Come find the barn, and then go reverse shopping. But I figured then I that lasted for all of like five seconds because I smartly realized that, frankly, that's rude. So I like the, the little trick, not trick, but um, accompanying piece of making the signs out of the wood that you're selling. That's a neat, just a neat touch. I like that because sometimes you don't always get to see what the the um, plank looks like. Um, I don't know. Because here's the thing. That's actually one of the that's one of the other reasons I came out here is because some people um, have already built stuff so I can see what the material looks like. So this is all... Oh, I don't have a what am I looking at. Okay. Yeah. So we've got some tiles and then this is because it's all... Um, deep stuff like this might be deep slate stuff because it looks more gray whereas bastion stuff down there is more black and we may end up using a mix of the two actually um i'm not great at texturing but i can try so yeah okay and as much as i would absolutely love to be simply be able to have a slash home command i don't you know i had a weird uh, <laughs> this is gonna sound really stupid but i dream about minecraft you know some people do, some people don't, whatever. Um, but one of the dream dreams I had was that in this dream we had reset the server, as much as that annoyed everybody because they got caught off guard. That's what happens in dreams. Um, and the only major difference compared to what we usually do was that suddenly in this new world, somehow, I have no idea, um, but somehow people had managed to convince the powers that be that because we don't do mini blocks on on the um, our server, I guess on the vanilla server, if I can talk straight, that we needed. Oh, geez. Okay. <laughs> I honestly figured I'd know where my house is, but let's okay, we'll we'll wing it. Um. Anyways, in this one. Let me get, finish my, my thought before I squirrel too far. Um, in the, they managed to convince the powers that be that the only mod we needed to add, because Bedrock had mini blocks, was we needed the placeable items mod. I'm like, eh, yeah. It looked cool, but everywhere I turned, things that you, that you shouldn't be able to put down were, and it really confused lots of people. Why? That's odd. Well, huh, I overshot. That's part of it. I'm going the correct direction, just... Why my place what didn't show up is confusing me. I can see... DR should be here. Edit. Local, right. Did I just, like, go and be dumb and go right past it? Yes, I did. That's odd, because I thought I had the beacons on for that one. 
I'm very confused now. Because that's kind of important to find home, you know? Uh, this one. Edit. Yeah, it's enabled. Hmm. The other thing that I find odd. Huh. Okay, well, apparently sometime in the last two months, I shut off journey map. That would ex also explain why some of my map buttons didn't appear to be working, is because they're not enabled. Oh, um... Can we just do a rescue on this one? One fictional... Now, Pixar specifically is a challenge. Oh, actually, um, restaurant in Ratatouille, I believe, was called Gusto's. Not Gusto's, you silly closed captions. It, it doesn't do well with French. So what I'm back here for is for gray and or black types of blocks. And to figure out my own good grief. I need to hire a wolfen, <laughs> just to like come and organize everything. I mean, even if it may seem organized, to actually sort them in such a way that we can start labeling things. After being away for nearly two months or a month and a half on this one, um, I really should start reorganizing the place. I know I've talked about needing a project. We're half, half done on the wall railing, but there's no way to get up to it. So, like quite literally, nearly half. If you, if you drew a straight line up, it walks its way, like, just past the edge of the castle. And then, um, we still have a building that needs to be built on the, on the monastery side. Um, it's just a residence, nothing super exciting. We need ourselves basically things like inns and so forth and basic different types of shops. So, I mean, I need to actually build, say, a blacksmith shop and so on, in, in spite of it being inside the castle. There's a logic to that at some point. East of Eden. Huh. I didn't even remember them going there, so that's cool. Hey, Bob. Um, okay, anyway, so as far as the re... So there's things that need to be built and added. The other thing I want to do is I will probably rebuild um, a mob farm, I think. Because I really want to do something with this ridiculous crater I've got up top. And I don't really like the fact that I hid my mob farm underground, because then it's just all a matter of image, right? Okay, where are we here? That's another squirrel, right? But that's one thing at a time. One thing at a time. What have we got in here? That was the wall project. Okay, skip that. Okay, these are... Okay, so that's for the mob farm underground. Let's sleep. My apologies for being all over the place. Um, yeah. There's reasons. There's reasons. I've been a little distracted lately because I decided one of the things that I was going to do was, um, well, I'm always distracted, but one of the things I was going to start doing is there, when I was at camp in October, uh, scout camp, and don't worry, not a ton of scout camp stories coming. Um, but, yeah, there we go. When I was at scout camp in October, uh, wait a minute, what? Okay. I was just gonna say I thought I had moved boxes, or for a second there, and so I should cover up the ground so nothing spawns there, but apparently I just have weirdly glitched out chests. Alrighty then! Huh. 
I'm not used to glitches. It's not something that... Yeah. Okay. Weird envisage chests and half chests, which can't even see the contents. Although that is kind of odd given that I just told you the story about the placeable items. They don't do this, I'll tell you that. Anyway, um, camp story, yes. Right? Is that where I was? Okay. Um, but as one of the first aiders on crew, um, the only one present for our cub section, bugbear, but anyways, um, I guess I might use one of those, keep my head straight. Um, one of these, okay, shulker boxes, they appear to have nothing in them. I'm looking for, what is this? Oh, okay, that's the box of, right. These. Um, ooh. Ooh. Okay, gonna need some of that. So, anyway, as the first aider on site... Which one was it? This one? No. There we go. Um, then it came... It fell to me to be the one in charge... Oh. Polished? Maybe. Um, to be in charge of... Hanging on to all the meds for all the kids. Okay. So we had three kids that all brought medication, same thing weirdly enough, um, for ADHD. And that might be nice roofing material. I don't know. Maybe I'll need it, maybe I won't. And so it just occurred to me at the time that, you know, it might be kind of nice to see what sorts of differences in the way that they react to, to life um, were worth us actually paying attention to. Mm. Get these out of there. I know it sounds funny, but... or odd, or whatever. Um, may not, but it got me exploring into, okay, well, what are some of the things people say or do that may or may not be helpful or whatever in various ways? Because one of the things I've re realized by accident was that I managed to figure out how to trigger the one autistic kid in our group. Just, um, apparently he gets frustrated when he thinks nobody's listening to him in spite of the fact that he very heavily fixates on various topics. So he'll talk about things like um, somebody's iPhone 14 for hours and hours and hours. Or he, his latest thing was he had an obsession with cars and he wanted to know what kind of car you want to drive and where you'd like to drive it to, what kind of tires you'd want to put on it, and would you bother souping it up, and what kind of stuff mods would you add, and I'm not a car person. Sorry, guys. You know, and it just oh, drove me crazy. Huh. Which one? The uh, autistic guy or the um, or the uh, ADHD kids? Because the autistic guy is... I'm trying to think. I think he's 11. Yeah, I think he's 11. 10 turning 11 or whatever, something like that. <laughs> Not quite. There's actually some very distinct differences, but I get I get where you're, like, the intention behind what you said. So anyway, um, I'm thinking I probably have some stuff out here in black. There we go. So this one will come. Or gray or whatever. And that one. This. Just steal this part. So, um, yeah, I managed to trigger that guy. He, he drives me nuts, but part of it is, could be me, you know, for all I know. Could be me. He's got confusion or whatever with, and challenges with the kid. So I'm looking at that sort of stuff. Um, and learning a bit more about how adults react to those types of situations, just it's sort of a side effect. And, um, deep slate, deep, a backstone. I am very confused. It's weird, because these deep slate tile stairs, I swear, they're, t they're darker than the polished. Which means we're going to use both. <laughs> right? Why not? What I was trying to do, actually, was to sort things a bit more. It's in here. Yeah, that's deep slate. That's blackstone. I guess it's still deep slate, so we'll just leave that there. Deep slate. Sort. 
Okay, the fact that Blackstone doesn't fit is just a thing. Anyway, um, so that's where my head's been a little bit lately, is falling down rabbit holes regarding that sort of stuff. There was a reason to the story, but the weird part is sometimes I can tell that when I'm getting stressed or tired or whatever, I'm starting to act more like these kids, and it's weirding me out, to be honest with you. Yeah, part of it became that there's much more of a push these days in our scouting organization to um, be, I guess, very open is probably not the word. Um, inclusive, and that's not that sounds wrong. It's not quite the word I'm trying to mean. Because inclusive sounds like you're accommodating for people that are different, and sometimes that's the case. But the aim is to try and have activities that everybody can take part in regardless of their their level, which is good on one hand. For me as a leader, very challenging, partly because my kids are on the other end of it. For the Americans, you might be more familiar with the concept of tag, talented and gifted. Up here, they call it um, gate. So they just reverse it all. Um, suffice to say, so we've got kids on both ends those that have learning disability challenges, those that legit just aren't as quick in life. And then there's those that, um, you know, need extra challenge and and they don't always want to be the leaders. Like the, the Swift ones don't always want to be the leaders with everybody else. And I can't blame them. But it does make it interestingly challenging to try and get everything sort of lined up to be able to have both. And sometimes you'll see kids get frustrated and, and basically my big key was trying to learn about what some of their triggers are. So if I see one um, getting frustrated about whatever it is they're being asked to do, I, am, I like, would like to know more about, is it the way that we explained it? Is it something that we said to them? Is it, you know, those sorts of things. And, um, and having three kids like that, I thought it was worth it, figuring it out. I mean, one, it's a little easier to figure out what that particular individual's triggers are. But my thought was that, you know, you go a little bit more general when you've got multiples. The other thing is that uh, um, ADHD is one of those ones where, like a lot of other um, mental health development things, that um, it can be common in parents as well if your kid has it. Even if it, the parent is more mild, it doesn't mean that you will, but I mean, a lot of it is, you know, related genetically to how your brain develops and stuff. And so we're looking at that, which may give us a better understanding on how come certain parents are um, forgetting things that we know we told them or not necessarily connecting the dots the same way we expected when we sent that, the information out about, you know, say a camp or something like that. And, and that's helping us a little bit to, I guess you'd say, put two and two together and potentially find better ways of communicating the information when we need something done in a particular way. So everything from, hey, are you able to do, to wiggle around just a little differently because what you're doing right now is disrupting the group, but also the other, another way of looking at it too is we have a couple of, um, I wouldn't say defiant, that's not the word. Um, kids who feel they, they have something to prove all the time, to prove that they are the best. They wanna be that you know uber popular, I know everything jock kid. And they're not neurodivergent, but they're best friends with someone who is. And the challenge with that is that when the neurodivergent kid has reasons for his disruptive wiggling, Mr. I want to prove everything seems to figure that he can get away with being ultra disruptive and talking through everything and stuff as well because his buddy gets away with it and that's not we're trying to get the message across that's not why certain things are overlooked without making anybody feel different and separate so yeah Exactly. You, that's precisely it. Yeah, so that's exactly it, um, Yellow, is that sometimes they... Well, sometimes the parents forget to, to pass it on. 
Um, one of the other things that we have that we have to deal with is unfortunately because yeah, because the uh, the the kid you asked about on the spectrum, as you put it, um, he. <laughs> He wears it like a badge of honor. It's hilarious. I love it that he's got the confidence to do that because so many kids um, don't have that opportunity or don't have that confidence in themselves. But um, this guy wears it like a badge of honor in that he will often tell you things. I can just walk up to you and be like, um, what was it? He'll ask you a question about your technology, for example, right? And what kind of phone you have or something like that. When you're in the middle of something that seems completely unconnected, and his excuse, his excuse is, um, what was he said last week? Because he was talking to somebody new. Oh yeah, so he asked him about the technology they had, and they gave him this funny look. They're like, I'm at Scouts right now. And he says, I'm autistic. I kind of get hung up on things. <laughs> he just announced it out in the middle of nowhere. I'm like, okay, well, good for you, dude. I not, but oh, I, okay. I was worried I hadn't put mending on that shovel because it looked a little bit um, problematic. Anyway, so it's it's this that kind of thing, but the autistic kid sets off the ADHD kids, and that's a bit of a challenge because some of their strategies for coping are similar to each other. But when you have to try and ask certain ones to not disrupt the the rest of the group, it's yeah, I always feel awkward put it that way. And then we're also dealing with a few old school people. And if you know what I mean, you know what I mean. The idea that the stereotype being scouts in the semi-paramilitary sense, you know, you need to be able to stand at attention rather effectively. You can't sway back and forth. You can't wriggle. You can't this or that. We've got a few that are old school that way. And they give you the stink eye when you try and say, just let him, you know? I mean, because they're not... They're looking for, like, attention in the militaristic standstill sense. Whereas, um, a lot of the kids they're saying that to literally just, they can get an at-ease more stance with the shoulder width apart feet kind of thing, but then they just have to kind of lean back and forth like some sort of cobra. And I just, just let him be, and, and, this, and this guy gives you the stink eye, and it's like, no, I'm not trying to let him get away with stuff. But if you stop bringing attention to it, then the other kids that you claim he's disrupting just learn to ignore it. You know, so it's... He doesn't know. I don't think he uses it as a crutch. Um, the autistic kid uses it as a almost a badge of honor to explain himself. So it's sort of like, the, you answer my question, then you tell me you can't deal with it right now, and I'll leave you be. So my response is, you know, give him a fake name for a second here, but I mean, it's like... He says, um, so how's your iPhone 14 working for you? Is it was his question. And I just said, working just fine, but right now, Ethan, we're at Scouts and we don't and we don't play around with our technology. He goes, oh, okay. And then he lets it be. But you have to tell him this isn't the place or the time. And he goes, okay. But when somebody doesn't understand, and that's when he uses his, you know, here's my explanation of who I am. And then it's sort of once you know that then you, it's easier to deal with them. The other thing is, is um, the autistic kid has actually become fairly confident in being, in being able to explain his needs. I like that. Like he's relatively high functioning in that sense. Um, so every once in a while, he'll, ju he'll just like interrupt in the middle of a sentence, which is kind of rude, but you know, um, in the middle of a sentence saying, Akela, I need to go to my corner right now. And it took me a second or not a second, but it took me a few weeks to figure out what he meant. And it was his way of saying, I'm overstimulated, I need space. And we found out the hard way what one of his reactions was when, when this um, hardcore scout, or not the Akela, um, said, you can wait till we're done, is he actually starts humming to himself quite loudly. If he doesn't get his chance to go and have a space moment, and kid you not, it's like 10 feet away from everybody with inside of everybody. Like it's not, and you could even hear him if he did start to hum, but he doesn't need to if he gets that space thing. And you, you can tell him when he's trying really, really hard to wait as long as he can. It's like the kid who's got to use the washroom sort of thing and you see them do the dance. He's got his own little wriggle dance that 
lets me know he's starting to go down this path. And so it's these sorts of things that I'm not trained in, so I just like to try and, you know, hear from pe from parents and stuff who say, hey, here's what my... here's what seems to work for my kid. Or let them know, yes, you could, you know, my kid's high-functioning enough that you can just directly ask them certain kinds of questions about what's going to help them right now. And it, we discovered, actually, that there were a couple... With the autistic kid, we discovered there's a couple of, um... They got, not triggers, um... I guess, yeah, signals. Maybe it's probably a better way of putting it. And solutions that apparently work at scouting that don't work at home. And I think it just has to do with, potentially, the amount of exposure to people. So... We all have a tolerance for each other that's different than someone might have who lived with this person day in and day out. So it was just interesting to, kn to know all that. But when I had three kids show up with ADHD meds at camp, I'm like, okay, what can I do to help make these kids more comfortable? Because they're often the ones that are wriggling and squiggling. And sometimes t if you put them next to each other, they'll actually talk to each other, which really doesn't help anybody. So yeah. But that's where my distraction has been like this part of this week. And learning and wondering. You can't ask somebody outright, and it'd be rude if you did, but wondering if taking some of the um, tips and strategies I'm reading about in how to deal with autistic, autistic sorry, um, with ADHD adults might help get some of the parent communication going a little smoother. But we'll have to see, you know? Okay, do I... Ha ha ha! Brought the materials to build, and I didn't bring the materials to fill holes. On the other hand, I do want to flatten this bit out, because I'm going to need the space, so I'll just repurpose that. Diggy diggy! It's one of those things I seem to be very good at getting myself into. Every season there's always some diggy diggy. This time it's not as big as last, last season. Okay, so, let's see. We had four songs about America. Have we covered that one off yet? boss that geek out. Okay, cool. Let's skip it. Actually, just for kicks, does someone who is not a mod want to type the command for a change? Because, I mean, anybody can do it as long as it's not within five minutes of the last time it was used. That's really all the key is here. So the command would be exclamation point geek out. And that will switch it up. Part of the reason getting the new Geek Out information um, input into the system is I tend to do it while I'm watching streams and very happily let the stream distract me from, from inputting Geek Outs. And sometimes I have to come back and and uh, change t stuff because I've been typing what I was hearing rather than what I read. There we go. So Geek Out category unfortunately became Disney. Um, live action again. Three full titles of Muppets productions. Ooh, ouch. Okay. Weirdly, I could probably do that, but I'll see if anybody else can first. Is... Yep. A Muppet Christmas Carol. Muppet's Christmas Carol. I love that one. That's actually one of my two go-tos at Christmas. And the only one in three, so you're pretty much there. Especially since the reboot had one of the most lame titles known to man. Well, I shouldn't say the reboot, the, the more modernized series of films. Um... So actually, that does that does um, bring up something that's been discussed in a few other streams. But we're getting close to the season. If one is to make time for watching Christmas flicks or seasonal flicks, so apologies if you're not a Christmas person, you know, Festivus or anything else. Um, what is, what are some of your go-to, say, television specials or um, movies that that you would watch over and over and over again? Not every like. 
I'm not saying binge watch it back to back, that's just silly. But as in a seasonal piece. So Muppets Christmas Carol is one of my top two. Um, personally, the other one is Angela Lansbury doing Mrs. Santa Claus. And partly because I like musicals, partly because I like Angela Lansbury. And uh, partly because it was a thing that my mom introduced me to, so there's some nostalgia to it. But I know the lyrics to that quite well, <laughs> as Fantastic Sherlock Fox has to put up with every year. And yes, Angela Lansbury, R.I.P. Exactly. Oh, good. I'm not crazy. <laughs> I grew up watching It's a Wonderful Life so much that I got sick of it for many, many, many years. But just last year I picked it up again. I have not exposed my kids to it yet. Um, I'd like to, but they already stare at me when I want to suggest showing them another movie. It's like, oh, it's one of those mom movies kind of thing. We got to Princess Bride and original um, Pirates of the Caribbean that way. But yeah, I haven't had a whole lot of luck. Christmas movies, though, I got them into Muppet Christmas Carol, so they're okay with that. They're aware that I actually kind of binge Christmas Carol at Christmas. Uh, I like watching a lot of different versions of it. And It's a Wonderful Life is an awkward one, because sometimes... I'll be up front. Sometimes I've had days where I can see why George Bailey made the wish he did. You know? And and so that's part of why sometimes I stay away from the film. But, um, yeah, Christmas Carol is one that I binge like crazy. And yet, I don't like some of the modern ones. Um, the Patrick Stewart Christmas Carol I can deal, and I like that one a lot. But I don't like, say, Scrooged. Yes. The whole black and white thing. I don't get it. It doesn't mean that we've that they had bad writers. I mean, these days, particularly when Hollywood can't seem to get themselves organized to not be... How do I put it? Repeating themselves over and over again? We were talking about another day. Hollywood has nothing new these days. It's kind of frustrating. There's a lot of other Jimmy Stewart movies and other black and white movies I would not recommend to people to see just because things have moved on in terms of styling that came with came with the color. But yeah, there are a few classics that I would recommend and that's one of them. Honestly, I, yeah, I that's one I don't like. But then again, Bill Murray's movies as a whole um, don't usually work for me, partly because he very frequently gets hired to do roles that are cynical. Almost always cynical. And for me, movies are a bit of an escape. Not necessarily an escape from reality, but I want something a little different. And if the life and world is being cynical all over the place, then watching a movie with a cyn cynical central character doesn't do it for me. Well, there you go. <laughs> I mean, there's some that for Christmas movies that are sugary sweet, like it's been a really long time since I watched any version of, uh, was it Miracle on 34th Street or whatever? I just, yeah, that one, that one I get the whole Santa Claus court case concept and whatever, but just, you know, no thanks. Been there, done that. Black and white reboots, whatever. I will admit I'm in the camp that cannot see the purpose to to the Christmas story. I actually don't like it. <laughs> so apologies if it's if it's one of your you know your things. I don't get why everybody thinks it's such a classic. Yeah, that's another one that fits in that. I just don't get it. I mean I <laughs> I don't think necessarily the Schwarzenegger type, if you'll let me say so, um, is Christmas character actor fodder as in like they're just not great at it i just don't see they would do a good job in those but i mean once again sometimes the actors can get bit by the the um you know the, the offers from the various casting directors it's just not 
Like the scripts they get offered don't necessarily. Uh oh. Where did. Oh, better be underground. Where did they come from? Anyway, so they being zombies, I'm hearing like the weird. Flirty sounds, and they're coming. They, they're finding me. But the question is where from? There must be a hole over here in the ground somewhere. Um, anyhow, where am I coming with this? Sometimes it's the scripts, and then a character or an actor becomes somewhat typecast. You know, we need a Arnold Schwarzenegger type. Whatever that means. There's another one, like if you're talking types, another person who gets stuck with that a lot is Harrison Ford. You need a Harrison Ford type, and it's not necessarily always um, a Han Solo of sorts, or, you know, it could be an, like an Indiana Jones of sorts. I've seen some pretty weird ones with Harrison Ford in them. And he's definitely falling into what I'm going to call the Mark Hamill trap from, and I know it's sort of another Star Wars-y thing, but from from the fact that the kinds of things they've done so many times over the years, they've become cynical as a, as a result. So if you catch Harrison Ford on a bad day when he's being interviewed, he will be grouchy as all get out. And willing to tell you to your face, you know, hey, this is not the IP, the stuff you're asking me is not the IP that I'm here to advertise. Right, that sort of thing. I think sometimes I wonder if people like the former governor um, get stuck the same way. That's the other question. Okay, can, aside from when it's when Die Hard is set, why do people think that's a Christmas film? Anybody care to explain that to me? I don't think you're wrong, I just don't get it. Then again, I will preface this by saying, as Fantastic Sherlock Fox well knows, I'm not a diehard fan. I'm not an anti-diehard kind of person, I'm just not a fan. Okay, so this should be enough space. Oh, let's take the floating tree down, that's gonna bug me. But this should be enough space to get the anvil in there, particularly if, if the hangover piece sticks out towards what's going downhill. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Fantastic Sherlock Fox. I really need to figure out how to get a little ad notifier to pop over my game. If anybody has any clue on that one, just let me know. And that's to let me know because if I'm not, I've got a triple um, monitor setup. So if I'm mentally focusing on the game screen, which is the center one, I'm not seeing my OBS on for me, which is this side, nor am I seeing the bot stuff going on on this side. So, um, there could be a lot of things going on that I'm just missing. But yeah, I'm just, I'm not a diehard fan. Um, so if anybody wants to explain to me why they think that's a Christmas film, I'm good with that. It could be a good film. You know, that's, that's great. I'm not anti Bruce Willis. He's not one of my favorites, but, um, yeah, it's just, I'm not a, there are films that people watch at Christmas that I don't necessarily understand why they're themed Christmas films, aside from being set there. I mean, I will also put out though that um, I do enjoy as a as a lark some films that plenty of people have said are absolutely terrible. Um, one very good example of that is I get a cheap kick every once in a while out of watching um, Ernest Saves Christmas. And then every time I watch it, I go, oh, yeah, that's why I don't watch it, because it's it's terrible. Like, I'm sorry, but it is. It's, it's terrible. Uh, there's there's bright moments in it. Certain characters I would love to see in other things for comedic reasons. But Ernest P. World films are generally pretty bad. Wow. Sorry, I just caught the, the uh, Alan Rickman reference. 
Huh. You know, I must have slept through that part. I apologize, but yes, I probably did. Just in that... I'm picturing certain ones of Alan Rickman's other characters. No, not Snape this time. But I just can't remember that guy's name at the moment. Um, where... It would be really, really odd to see him read something like that. Possibly, yeah. I mean, I think maybe part of my resistance is the fact that not all Christmas movies need to be sugary, sweet, cheery. I'll give you that, okay? But the reality part of it is... Not the reality part of it. The um, notion that there are people doing diehard type things just doesn't... The two of them are kind of, well, for lack of a better term, they're kind of black and white to me. Or, you know, there really isn't a reference. I'm thinking of it in terms of black and white movies, just so everybody's clear here. Um, but okay, Christmas Story. What is it about that thing? The actor's fine. He doesn't do it well, but he's about as he's about as endearing to me as the early Anakin Skywalker from from the reboots of Star Wars, as in like. As, as some way may be happy to refer to it, the Jar Jar mistake. Okay, let me just... Uh, I really wish I could bookmark things, but... Anvil. Okay, I'm gonna need to put out a... Um, actually, this is... I'm just going to sneak to the side for a second and just grab myself a picture of the anvil, just so that I can start building one. Anvil images. Great, okay, good. Good enough, Google. It's probably because I'm a girl. I know it sounds awful to say these days, but I don't get the Red Rider thing. And I don't think my brother would either, but that's just because we didn't do stuff like that. I mean, if you want to, if you're saying, you know, um, I think is it, I don't remember which Pee Wee Herman movie it is, but there's one where he, at one point he's freaking out about the loss of his bike, you know, and that I could follow as a Christmas thing. The leg lamp, weirdly enough, I actually strongly dislike the leg lamp. I don't know. Yeah. To each their own, but yeah. One of the first things that goes through my mind, some people that are fans of it, of that movie will actually buy those to have in their house. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I see it and my brain goes, oh my god, tacky. But this, there's plenty of stuff that I own and do that is equally tacky, if not worse. Therefore, I really don't have any grounds to stand on in that respect. Trying to turn non-Minecraft shapes into Minecraft stuff is different. Put it that way, different. Oh yeah, for sure. No, no, I can, I can follow that. I mean, in the same sort of way that, like, I will never understand, because cause I haven't had an experience in life that required me to, um, people who go all out on, like, say, bingo night, where, and I, like, daubers and such, oops, I didn't count that, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, oh, come on, it's gotta be... Actually, 17 will get me a door. Okay, we're good. Um, but when people go on a bingo dauber type night, and the prizes that they're all excited about is, like, wrap meat. I've just never had a situation in life where that was, would ever be the kind of thing that appeals to me. But then again, I'm not going to, you know, fault people for whom that is their thing. Okay, proportions-wise, that's way wrong. Need to go a bit longer on this side. Sorry, guys. 
Um, what did I do? 17, 19, 20, 21. Yeah, that'll look a little better. So, hey, okay, you know, everybody's got their own successes, hang ups. So apparently I do have a sorting inventory button at times. Apparently not when I'm looking at things, but I was trying to figure out why my ender chest moved around again. Because there are some things I would love to lock in and say, you can't move these. And it's like, well, if you'd stop using mods, you'd kind of solve your problem. You know? So... Anyway, uh, dirt. This way. Gotta square it off. So, yeah, but that's fine. You know, the, if the Christmas story is your, your bag, I guess enjoy. Just, yeah. I don't know. I haven't, actually. I know I've had the opportunity, but I don't recall having actually seen it. Okay. I guess I'm gonna have to take one out. One, two, three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. If I'm right, this should be it. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Ten. Yeah, it's twenty-one. Okay. That's my marker for the center. <clears throat> That looks better for a length, I think. And then we'll have the like the horn section of a, an anvil that you see the real world sticking out on this side. Several ways up, so I don't have to move the tree. Alright. I haven't actually, oddly enough, I can't recall... Okay, this must be hollow under here, because in my mini-map, I see that I'm, like, standing on top of a, a zombie. And part of what weirds me out, actually, about standing on top of, like, zombie spaces is when they walk. Some people say it sounds like they're standing on muck of some sort, like, you know, uh, mud or something. Of late, I don't know, somebody, one of the kids at Scudding had made a comment, and now I can't unhear it. Is it to them, zombies walking around sounded like um, when you've got a toddler or something and they're just wandering around with with their soother and you just all you're hearing is the sucking noises? It's like a, the absent-minded once every few seconds type of suck noise. And I'm not sure I agree, but now that I've sort of been told that and I heard it, I can't really unhear it. Anvil, how big do I want this thing to be? Looking at the picture and going proportions. One, two, split it in half. Okay. So I'm gonna ballpark one and a half times the length. Oh, that's not right either. Double the length? Hmm. Length to height. Okay, this will be square ish. Let's try making a. This is 21. Okay, so let's see how high we go. Roughly the middle, more or less ish. Please tell me it's not even inside. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Really? There. Whoops. Problem solved. All right. Um, question of the mission impossible. I mean, I, I, I fall for sappy movies a lot. A lot of sappy movies. Like, I will admit, even as an adult, I watched, happily watched Santa Paws. 
Just once. You know one of those puppy type movies? Just once. I have what been known to watch, like, was it Air, Air Pups or something? I've been known to watch that. So, yeah. Doesn't mean that I'm sane. One, two... I'm just gonna wing it, I guess. And we'll see where we go from here. Okay. At the moment, it's just, it's being put together in whatever I have in my inventory. We'll figure out texturing and what these blocks should have been as we go, once I get the shape. The Christmas meaning built into it. Yeah. I mean, I guess one could say technically, if we're saying that um, Die Hard is a Christmas movie, I guess equally going in the sort of sappy direction, um, one could say that Annie is a Christmas movie. because the whole premise for why Annie gets to go to the millionaire's house is because the millionaire supposedly will have one orphan over for Christmas for a week or whatever and then I guess and then send them back or something. That's sort of the whole reason that she gets to go up to, to quote unquote Daddy Warbuck's place. He's not daddy at that point, but yeah. Oliver Warbuck's house. And so I guess technically that's a Christmas movie in the same vein, although I'm probably the only person on the planet who would ever call it that. Who empty?
Thanks, Yellow. What actually happened? <laughs> okay, I'll give you the, uh... I have, oh, I've been gifted by Fantastic Sherlock Fox, one of the Elgato foot pedal things, right? And that runs the camera and the mute. Um, I didn't say anything during that period, but yeah. All right. And so I had just leaned back, you know, you, you stretch your legs out and you just crush your feet. But I, with the back of my heel, I didn't realize I'd hit the muted button on the way by. So the, and it's a three button pedal. So then the center that controls the B, B right back screen, but we don't really use that a whole lot. But yeah, so the mute is on one outside edge and then the camera's on the other side. And I had just stretched out and accidentally bumped that, not realizing I had done so. Give me a second. What I'm going to do. Um, there we go. I've just moved my little pop-up on my screen that shows me which of the three pet, um, but pedal buttons are, are pressed. I moved that onto my game so that we shouldn't have that happen again. But that doesn't mean it won't. It's just less likely. It's like a stream gas pedal. No, mine's more brakes. Brakes, right? Because one has to repeat things. Hey, Gary. Thanks for your patience, by the way, for everybody who came in. It happens, yeah. Well, let's just say I've had mistakes going the opposite direction where I didn't mute things, and we're not talking about sneezes and stuff. Um, but yeah, it's not been great. Okay, so welcome in, Gary. Um, yeah, definitely glad you could drop by. Don't know how long you guys have been hanging out. I'm sort of kind of winging it on making an anvil. And I'm not particularly sure what I want it to look like. I think it's just time that we go up. One, two... Yeah, I can go in one more, but the next round has to go up. And I could actually dig out my scaffolding. I probably will. I just... I don't need it yet. This definitely needs texturing. It definitely needs a change in the bricks. And the blocks involved, because, I mean, the cobbled look that, that Blackstone default has is way too plain. Or way too, sorry, wait, not way too plain, way too busy. What I'm looking for. I mean, if you if you were in a blacksmith shop and you saw an anvil that's got this sort of like semi cobbly texture on it, I would not trust it not to crack. So anyway, um, yeah. As you can probably guess by now, some of my squirreling and such and such is not necessarily just game distraction, but that's part of it. So there may be more to my explorations on behalf of the kids. We'll see where it goes. This is going to be the world's jankiest looking anvil you've ever seen. Because I have no idea what I'm doing. However, it just occurred to me, on this one I've got free cam, whereas I didn't have free cam on the modded. It was one of those I meant to add it things and I just never got around to it. I'll be honest, I missed my broom. That sounds really dumb, but on the modded server um, I had put together from one of the mods, we actually had a witch's broom, which was kind of cool. And therefore I could just float out and see what, what was going on, sort of um... See how it looked from a distance. Okay, this one. Base is looking good, but I need to go up probably two more and then start spreading out, I think. No, base is too much. This top layer is too narrow. I think I would need to bring it out one and then go straight up. That's okay, we can deal with that. Under my feet. There we go. Um, where was I going? I had a story. Yeah. So that's the sorts of things I do is that you'll still, in my personal playlists, when you can use all of the, um, and all the copyright music you like, because it's just for personal listening. Um, yeah, I still listen to a lot of the wintry themed holiday music for that week between 
And actually, you'll see it every once in a while, you'll see it pop up in the mix in January and February, specifically limited to winter themed songs. So basically, as long as it's winter, I'll listen to a winter themed song without problem, without issue or complaint. But I know there's people that go, oh my gosh, why are you still listening to that stuff? The season's over, and it's like, well, no, there's still snow on the ground. So it doesn't have to be over. But, uh, yeah. What, I mean, in terms of that sort of thing, many kids have a, a break, because we, you know, are a mostly, supposedly mostly Christian part of the world. Um... And that's as far as I'm getting on the Rujin thing, just related to holiday days and stuff. Um, so often they'll have a, a break that starts before Christmas and then continues till like, what was it? I think ours go back third, I think, ish, or somewhere between the third and the sixth of January um, to school. That is. So what do you guys, you know, do, watch, listen to in between? I know parents don't always get the time off, but it's still not necessarily. Um, Non-winter, I suppose? Six months? <laughs> You're optimistic. But yeah, no, I, I get your point. Um, Canada is a weird place. Particularly the, the city I live in. Um, or, well, the region I live in. Southern Alberta, uh, for those of you that have, have heard of the weather pattern, we have something called Chinooks. So what it actually means is we get warm wind breaks that come through. Um, you'll see on, in Dadcraft's Discord, you'll see Fantastic Shock Fox frequently posting a morning picture or wherever of, like whenever I mean, of um, a big cloud arch in the sky. And so we'll get the wind or the air layers will split in such a way that you'll get a huge layer of, of cloud and then, in, and then it's got a sort of a lid almost, like an edge to it and we call that the Chinook Arch, and we'll get warm winds. So it could be February and be like 12 degrees Celsius above, ab above freezing. Which drives me crazy. Um, just because I'm one of those people who likes to acclimatize to the weather. So, for example, if you're up where um, Arch Thunder lives, about three and a half hours north of me, um, like, but my family, my brother lives up there. And you'll see, you know, after a while, you can go for, you know, 15, 20 minute walk or whatever with no gloves on in the minus temperatures. Well, or sorry, pardon me, below freezing temperatures, let me be a little more general. With no problems. Your skin just deals. It's not a big, like, you're not likely to get frostbite and whatever if you don't spend stupid amounts of time up there. Um, and yet... With these Chinook temperatures, your system doesn't get that chance to acclimatize. It's one of my biggest bugbears. Fantastic Shock Fox gets tired of hearing me whinge about it. Um, but yeah, that's like you don't get that chance. However, we also joke up here about it being um, about it being what is it? Snow ten months of the year, and then la and the last two months of the year are just are all construction. I mean, it's really not quite that bad. It's more like, I would say, probably eight and four. <laughs> so we do get summer, because then that's when they start whining about how, how dangerously hot it is out here. Okay, so that would be my base. Climbing up. F4? There we go. Not Alt F4, just F4. I may have to talk to Zeroed um, and see. Sorry, Itchy. Uh, I may have talked to Zeroed and see where he got his sound. I think it's hit, hit him who has a, an F4 sound. It's not really an F4 sound, it's an F5 sound. But then it, it talks about F5, 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 Alt F4. And he uses that as his redeem for over the shoulder stuff. So I'll have to see where he picked that one up because it's kind of cool. All right, um, let's skip MTV. I'm kind of tired of looking at that one. 
That didn't help. <laughs> We're on to Pulp Culture Party Edition. Subcategory Literature, so anything written. Two titles in which people or creatures live underground. Okay. Why am I drawing a blank on an H.G. Wells title? Seriously? I mean, I guess technically, people or creatures. You could even cover Tolkien with Hobbits and Lord of the Rings. Anything that's got dwarves in it work. But I was thinking of um, some of the future people from um, the H.G. Wells time machine. Oh, sorry about that. Yes, okay, I can see why. <laughs> I'll just say it. So, <clears throat> we're talking about MTV Productions, and um, Terror Darts was talking about the show called Pimp My Ride and Cribs. I think you're right. Um, because we don't use that term very often, except in a weird situation like this, I'm not going to go and approve it, because it'll stick around long term. Yeah, so I'll leave that one, that's cool. There was also, um, oh, what's his name? Bone with Foos. And it's very similar to, to the Pimp My Ride show. Anyways, but I think that might have been another one, or at least a knockoff from that. Yeah, The Hobbit definitely has characters that live underground. Creatures-wise, spiders probably live underground, I will assume. West Coast Customs, yes. And then there was, um, oh shoot. I want to say Choppers, but no, it's not the one. Um, go with the Jesse gal that eventually ended up on Mythbusters. I don't know. I'm see. The, I watch these things and I don't remember any of the titles. So yeah. Okay, let's see. Anvils. The top is definitely narrower than the base, but this. <laughs> I've idly wondered what would happen if I banned that word. It's not crude or anything like that. I just, just kind of wondering what would happen. Actually, I guess that would mean that poor Max would get auto modded. We don't need that. Nobody needs that. Max doesn't need to get auto modded. I had to explain that one to <laughs> Did that- Um, I guess we're talking written stuff. If written stuff can- in this particular pop culture series, they will include comic books. Whereas some of the other ones have comic books as a separate category. But I guess if we're including comic books, then Mouse Guard has a lot as well of underground or subterranean stuff going on. Characters living underground. So for those of you that are not aware, there's a bit of a story to this. Bidet to you, Max, as well. I'm not fully sure of all the story. Max might have to fill us in, but it's a bit of an in-joke on uh, Dadcraft 73's community, where somehow, I think it was a mispronunciation or typo or something, Max, you have to tell us, was it on your stream or was it in Dadcrafts that, that it happened? But there was an oops involving, um, what was it, references to teasing about the Australian Good Day concept and it somehow got changed to B Day. And we've all had a good chuckle and it's just kind of stuck around. That's okay. Yeah, that's why I was asking about H.G. Wells. Oh. There's the one that I hadn't caught that connection, Terror Darts. Somebody else was saying something about that and I didn't catch two and two together. Okay, that makes sense. Here's the skinny. I don't mind if it comes into my stream too, I'm good with that. It's just, I like, I kind of forgot where it had come from. Because I must have been asleep at the switch on that one, which would not be surprising. Or once again, re-squirreled. I mean, I think I'm going to need a squirrel emote. I'll have to see if my daughter will draw one. Or a sheep dressed up as a squirrel. That might be more her thing. 
Yes. Okay. Got it. I know what critical role is. D and D ish. I would say it's D and D adjacent. <laughs> okay. Got it. You're a critter, really? Wow. Yeah, I guess that makes sense, Max. Initially, I didn't think that would be your style, but okay, cool. I can follow that. Nope, it's not F5. F5, F5, F4. Okay, there we go. Guess I'm gonna have to look out this way just so I can get further back. All right, so this... This end has to start going at an a diagonal angle, I think. And then this one needs to come out more and start going at a sloping angle. Hmm. Organic shapes are always problematic. Not organic, but like as in me doing something organically as opposed to having somebody else having done it first. Okay, there's some more black stone, so let's... I was just gonna, oh, I'm like, I'm just gonna fly down there, and then I realized I can't fly, and then I'm like, well, yeah, actually, I can fly. I don't even remember what stuff I have in various servers anymore. What's this? I really should change up the block. I mean, it's, it's black to death right now. This has got to go out wider. We're getting there, though. Journey to the center of the Earth. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. No, that's actually not clutching at straws. That is definitely very, very applicable to the underground stuff. Now, can I actually fly up here? Let's find out. Uh-oh. Oh, I'm going to come in too hot. <clears throat> I'm probably miss. Ooh! Yay, stuck it. The very, very named Grog heard his band of misfits named Vox Machine. Machina. Greeting people with good day. Okay, so the Australian esque thing. One, two, three. It's probably high enough. Oh! Haha! <laughs> I get it. Okay. Oops. Four. That's what I want. I get it. Why they'd be talking about bidets, I that's the part nobody understands. Like why he would even think that. But I can see that he did. Okay. Makes makes more sense now. The critter. <laughs> now I get it. Okay. And the other part is, if you hadn't actually said uh, critical role and told me you were a critter, I'd be like, ah, because <laughs> to me, critters in that sense mean something else. Like you're t talking flaming fox, fantastic Sherlock fox. I'm like, I didn't think you were a critter, but now I'm getting it better. I have absolutely no idea. What is off in the distance over there? I think that's somebody's shop, but what I'm seeing... Um, do I even have... Excuse me. You know, I don't think I ever made an amethyst crystal telescope. Because I'm just so used to... Oh, nope, that's not it. So used to actually having zoom abilities, but that's a carrot. Right in, in the dead center. I hadn't really noticed that from, from working on the Tridar thing. I hadn't noticed. Oh, okay. Watership down and maybe Legend of Drizzt because of Bruner and the Dwarves. That's true. Um, if we were talking animated stuff, I would add Rats of Nim. But we weren't, so take this one. I'm just going to do one more fly out here, because I'm going to have to sleep soon. Ooh. Okay, the right-hand side's got to come up a couple more, just to give me space to do things on the left. F4. 
before. Come on. Bring out this way. That's the other part. Is somehow I'm getting turned around in my head, and that's not working well. Not sure what slope do I want on this one? Just double? No, let's make it triple. One, two. I guess it was, yeah. Yeah, the secret of Nim was amazing. Bit dark, but I mean, it's nice to have a dark, a dark thing once in a while. Let pull these out of the way. Don't need that. Get the dirt, dirt out of the way. I think we've covered more than two titles, so we'll give it a new one. If anyone wants to type the new one, go right ahead. Otherwise, I will. I'm just... My brain's thinking about... Where do we go next on this one? One, two, and out. Yeah, okay. We gotta get back up there. Oh, not high enough. Oh, good. I honestly thought I was gonna smack into the wall on that one. I was going to say I miss backwards bridging. I know that sounds really weird to say that. Up. Oh. Okay. I need to start getting narrower. The 45 would be a little too much. Oh, actually, I got a better idea. So some of these are wrong, but that's okay. We're not going to redo everything, just some of it. Go this way. we get. Weird music. One of those days, I suppose. I will grab a new geek out. Here we are. Named immortal characters. Uh, not this time around. First time back on the server is time for me to uh, figure out a few more things, but I also have some errands to run in between and stuff. Okay, let's take that. Aw, oh, man. Well, gotta go get him. I'll leave that there for climbing purposes at the moment. Let's see where we go in the sand. See if we meet up in the middle. Ten minutes left on this. One, two. Up. One, two. Up or in? In. Okay. Really matter, I suppose. Which direction? I still say thank you very much to CJ Bot for uh, gifting me the the ability to actually crouch at high speed, because we would be here forever if I didn't have that. Excellent. This is going to work.
Let's see how this pirate shipy look came out. <laughs> yeah, it'll do. It's not quite what I'm hoping for. <clears throat> Excuse me. I think it needs to be a little longer, but I th think the max end is probably about the same. It needs to be more circular as well. That's good, we can deal. With a great start, exactly. Nope. Actually, upside down ship would be a nice thought, but no. Um, Max, I apologize for not mentioning it earlier. So what I'm making is, um, is, uh, James Curry, um, aka Chackham on this server, um, had suggested that they were looking for a shop that just had gear and tools, um, as in, like, like armor and tools at a fairly cheap price, just save people from having to deal with their villagers, or any villagers. So I figured, why not do that inside an anvil? So yeah, this is a semi-anvil shelf, or shelf shape. This back one is going to stay just a nice 45 angle to make it a little wider before you get the flat top of the anvil. It's going to be very, very flat. And then this one needs to um, get the length and the curve right underneath, and then we need to figure out how to round it off. So at some point, I'm going to be coming at it from the end, or the side, I guess, and trying to do a semicircle, which I'm dreadful at, but we'll see. Yeah. That's why it looks kind of like a really sad-ass rhino. Pardon me, a really sad rhino. Family-friendly fail. Um, but it's not intended to be a rhino. <laughs> and the other thing is, compared to that, for example, I don't want to be anywhere near that big. It's headed that way, but I need to be careful with that. We've already outsized the pumpkin. We've outstripped the size of the barn, which is kind of a shame. Uh, we made the carrot look tiny. And the other carrot looked tiny, so yeah, I need to watch watch myself just a little bit. We've got about five more minutes. I'm not a huge fan of that shape now that I'm looking at it. It slopes too much. But I'm sure I could figure it out. So, anyways, we're getting there. We're getting there. So I'm gonna go on to the other end and do bit more of the 45 degree angle part of it. That's a little bit easier to do in five minutes. Size, schmize. Do we have limits on our builds? No. But if we want it done this century, we should probably get a move on, so to speak. The other thing is, the bigger you make it as a shop, the more you have to fill it with. I'd rather, for a change, have a problem with too much stuff and not enough place to put it, as opposed to the other way around. I mean, one of these days, I may end up with a wool shop. I, that was sort of my intent at, at one point, um, on the dad, uh, Dadrock server, the Bedrock one. Um, one. That was part of my intent at one point, to just have a wool shop built inside a sheep. But then someone else beat me to it. Um, and the thing about it, <clears throat> tra Tradar is a big build, but one could argue it's a simple build, but it has to do with the conversation that Fantastic Shock Fox and I were having about volumetric scaling. And what I mean by that is if you, um, I'm not great at this, but Dadcraft can explain it a lot better. He's, he's better at that sort of thing. But the idea basically being that if I if I took a look at one of these blocks and wanted to replicate it, then made each one of these squares to be an actual full-size block. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yeah, sixteen. So then if I was to make each one of these a full-size block, it wouldn't be this big. Okay, clearly, obviously, because that's one, right? It would be sixteen times as big, sort of. It would be 16 in every single dimension, which looks huge, huge, huge. So when you take, think of a um, a mob head like Tradar, the that's only eight blocks. So from one pixel, that thing came out of it, and it becomes big, right? 
So, I mean, I could probably have put a shop inside his head, which would be really weird. But yeah, so it, that's one of the, the challenges with this. And that's part of why some of my builds have been as big as they are. Exactly. Right? Um, another great example of that very thing, actually, is... If we take a look over here, she did a great job. But you can see that Poodle's head is huge. Right? I love it. Two, four, six, eight. Yeah, so she's gone to the same scale. So you take this head is the same size as Tradar's head, although sometimes I feel that Tradar's head is inflated just because he's full of himself. But neither way, or either way, it's big, right? And it gives you a lot of space to work inside. So with an, with an anvil, um, even if I was to take a regular Minecraft anvil and go one to eight on its pixeling, this is undersized. Also, I'll admit, when you get to this scale and you've got all of it being blackstone, that actually looks weird. Like, from out here, to me, what I see when I turn around and look at it, is it looks kind of like I've made it out of black bubble wrap. <laughs> Which, I'm absolutely hating. But, if I can get a basic shape I like, I could easily turn that into a lightmatic, so a schematic format and then tear it down, decide what block we want to make, and then build it back up again. You know? Or build it as we tear it down out of whatever block we want. So yeah, palette choice, total fail on this one. But hey, it, it, gets, it gets you what you need to start with. All right, so... The other thing, as I said is early on, is I'm going to need some pricing suggestions because uh, it's not that I don't, it's not that I want to scam people, but the other thing is I don't want to underprice it in such a way that it's just ridiculous. So we're not talking, um, you know, two diamond campfires or whatever the scam doors rates are going for these days. Um, they're meant to be a scam. That's kind of the point of the name of the store. Del can't fly! Jeez. Yeah, let's come in hot instead and just do a loop around. And just like spiral out of the sky and see if that does any better. Yes, okay. If I did price it in something other than diamonds, then Fantastic Dog Fox, you could build a, a bank and just use it for um, conversion of currency. And that's one of the other ones I thought might be kind of fun one year. Is just to have like a trading hall. A standard, fairly standard trading hall. But that then one runs a bank where all you do is convert stuff into emeralds to spend on the villagers. I could actually, if I could figure out how to do one of the things that might end up in some of this design is I might end up using um, dark gray concrete powder. That might work as well, but it might look sandy. Uh, I've also got basalt and stuff. I just, it's the whole bubble wrap thing. Like, I can't stop seeing bubble wrap when I look at this, right? And Or, or one of those fidget toys, you know, where you pop the, the bubble thing and it just flips inside out. I keep seeing those. Close up, it's not so bad. It looks more like a pathway, like somebody's yard. But from a distance, I keep seeing the circles and it looks bubbly. It just, yeah. I was thinking, um, what's the word? Um, for those of you in the know, it's like an arrow bar. And if you don't know what one of those is, I'm sure DC can explain his first impressions of an arrow bar when we sent him enough. But in either case, we've got a bunch of different options. So I'll probably be working on the shape a little bit, and we'll come back to it this evening. Um, and then we'll take a look at what sorts of palette choices we've got. <laughs> Yum. Yeah, it looks like an arrow bar. That might break your teeth to try and bite into an anvil arrow bar. The arrow bars were my favorite this year. It's always tempting to, to go digging through the Halloween candy and steal them all. But yeah, sugar and me, I will be honest, 
if I get too much sugar in an earlier part of the day, I do squirrel more. So, yeah. Anyhow. Let's... Oops, not that one yet. Let's just go back over here to the other side so the zoom out doesn't look totally stupid. Oops. And I, I don't try and fall off. There we go. So we're getting... Yeah, we're getting the start of a shape. And I think that's a reasonable place to call it for, for now. We'll find someone interesting to, to raid to. And... Um, and we will be back this evening working on this one. Black Forest, yes, Black Forest Truffle was amazing. So, more discussion of candy bars, Christmas, and um, anvils, as odd that is. Um, and we will just quickly throw it into chat, see who's interesting at the moment, or who's available live, that's probably more accurate. Because everybody can be interesting. That's kind of the point of being here. Ooh. Um. They've been up for two hours. Who have we got? Who have we got? I'm glad. I'm glad you guys had fun. We'll, we'll be back with a few more. More of the same. And yet at the same time, we're going to try and get more design shape done and maybe get some filling. So let's see. I think we're, we haven't been there for forever in a day. I think we're going to head over to Minecraft Mom 82. Thank you very much, Dadcraft. You are very, very welcome any day of the week that I'm on. And also thank you for what you do, because if without Dadcraft, we wouldn't be sitting here having this server. And I owe him an apology for not remembering to turn on the label. But um, yeah, it's around here somewhere. There we go. Well, we'll find it. Down in the corner. I found it. It's probably been there the whole time and I didn't even notice. Um, anyways, we're going to head over to Minecraft Mom 82. It says, uh, time for some end busting in their survival world. So that'll be something a little different that we haven't done for a while. Um, in the meantime, have yourselves a fantastic day and we will uh, be back, as I said. So, s oh geez, 7 p.m. Eastern, I believe. For me, it's 5 p.m. Mountain. That's what you're gonna be seeing popping up on the screen. If I can figure out how to get that to add a couple hours to it, we'd be accurate, but. Let's get this party started. Whoa, whoops. I have to mute this. Shh. Shush. Mute. Thank you. All right. And magic button, maybe? Mischief managed. Here we go. All right. So thank you everybody for coming by. I appreciate the follow. No Riptide. Also, thank you to Fantastic Shock Fox and Mama Bear and Poodle Pirate for spending some of their points. Also, thank you very much to Zerk and Fantastic Sherlock Fox for being our moderators today. And uh, thank you to Conversation from Poodle Pirate, Mama Bear, Yellow94TT, Bobreen73, and Max Money, as well as Dadcraft, Terrier Darts, No Riptide, Gary, and anyone else who's been hanging out. I really appreciate, appreciate that you took the time to stay. Um, hope you had a good time, and we'll see you again this evening. In the meantime, have yourselves a great day, and bye-bye for now.